This is a revision video about chemical displacement reactions and if you're taking GCSE chemistry then this comes up in unit 4 of the AQA GCSE chemistry which is the chemical changes topic. If you'd like some practice questions to accompany the video then there's a link to a worksheet in the description below. By the end of this video you should be able to define your displacement reaction, write a word equation for displacement reactions and predict whether two chemicals will take part in a displacement reaction based on their reactivity. The reactivity series is a hierarchical list based on how reactive different elements are. It's usually given as a list of metals, but with carbon and hydrogen, which are obviously non-metals, thrown in. This is because reduction using carbon is a really economically important reaction, which only works with elements less reactive than carbon, so it's important that we can compare these metals to carbon. And the reactivity of hydrogen is vital in order to predict which metals will react with water and acids. There isn't one standard version of the list. Strictly speaking, we could add every single metal in the periodic table, but here's a commonly used abridged version. The elements in brackets are ones that aren't listed in the current AQA specification, but they do occur in older versions of the AQA spec or in other exam boards, and so they're part of the mnemonic that I use to remember the reactivity series. Purple soda lemonade cans may also contain zebra idols that lead highland cows somewhere greatly peaceful. A displacement reaction is a chemical reaction in which a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. In this video we're mainly going to look at metals displacing metals, but this could also be a metal displacing hydrogen when it reacts with an acid, or something like a more reactive halogen displacing a less reactive halogen. You'll have heard the word displacement used in physics to describe what happens when you put a solid object into a liquid. Here I've got a beaker containing 100 mils of water. If I put this solid boiling tube in, the water level rises, and the reason is that the boiling tube has displaced the water and taken its place or pushed it out the way. We have a similar concept in chemistry where we also use the word displacement. In chemical displacement, it's a more reactive element that takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. So here's my element, some aluminium cases, and here's my compound some copper chloride. I'm going to add the copper chloride to the aluminium cases. Copper is much less reactive than aluminium. Now this reaction actually starts quite slowly and the reason for that is that aluminium is coated with a very thin layer of aluminium oxide. So even though aluminium itself is very reactive, the aluminium oxide is hard and protects it from further corrosion. This is what allows us to build aeroplanes and food cans out of aluminium, even though it's really reactive. As the aluminium oxide gradually begins to wear away, you can start to see the reaction happening. We can see a colour change and bubbling as well, because the reaction releases enough energy to boil some of the water in the copper chloride solution. This is a very exothermic reaction, it releases a lot of energy. Eventually, sufficient aluminium is corroded that the solutions fall through into the beaker below. At the end of the displacement reaction, the more reactive element has taken the place of the less reactive element in the compound. So down in the beaker, we have, instead of the copper chloride that we started with, aluminium chloride. And up here, you can see a reddish metal forming. The copper is not in its compound anymore, it's in its elemental form. So we now have copper and aluminium chloride. Time for a progress check. Pause the video and make sure that you can write down the answer to each of these questions. A displacement reaction is a chemical reaction where a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. The aluminium that we just saw reacting with copper chloride is an example of a displacement reaction because the aluminium is more reactive than the copper, so it can displace it. If we place copper in aluminium chloride, then nothing happens because copper is less reactive than aluminium, so it can't displace it. You need to be able to write word equations to describe chemical reactions like displacement. Remember, in a chemical reaction, no atoms are made or destroyed. We're just rearranging the atoms that we already have into different compounds. So for instance, for the reaction we just looked at, 
when aluminium reacts with copper chloride, we make copper and aluminium chloride. The aluminium has taken the place of the copper. Pause the video and complete each of the next five word equations. Hopefully that wasn't too challenging for you. Aluminium reacts with iron oxide to make iron and aluminium oxide. Sodium reacts with zinc nitrate to make zinc and sodium nitrate. Magnesium reacts with tin sulphate to make tin and magnesium sulphate. Lithium reacts with lead bromide to make lead and lithium bromide. And potassium reacts with calcium fluoride to make calcium and potassium fluoride. It doesn't matter which way round you've written the two products as long as you've got them both right. In a displacement reaction between one pure metal and a metal compound, the more reactive metal will always end up in the compound at the end of the reaction. You need to be able to use the reactivity series to decide whether or not a displacement reaction will happen. For each of these five questions, look up the two metals, decide which one is the more reactive, and therefore will the displacement reaction happen or not. If it will happen, finish off the word equation. So in question one, we have aluminium and zinc, and aluminium is higher up our reactivity series. So this displacement reaction will happen, and it will produce zinc and aluminium oxide. Iron is higher up than silver, so this reaction will happen as well. Silver plus iron nitrate. Magnesium is less reactive than potassium, so it's unable to displace it, and we won't see a reaction. Iron is higher up the reactivity series than lead, and so this reaction will also happen. And then aluminium is below calcium, so it's unable to displace it, and there will be no reaction. Thank you very much for watching, and if you did find that helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more chemistry videos coming soon.